pillars, they rupture. And when they rupture barrier aneurysm, they produce a hemorrhage in subarachnoid space. space. That's the clinical importance. This is the minimum a student should know about the blood supply to the central nervous system. That major vessels going to the central nervous system, which are carotid system and vertebral system and eventually making circle of villus, all this major arterial system is present in subarachnoid space all the time floating in CSF. Is that clear? Right. So what I was, why I asked this question? Because I was telling vertebral arteries are going upward through the foramen are present in transverse processes of cervical, not thoracic, cervical vertebrae. And eventually they go medially, right? Of course there should be something called skull over here with foramen. Suppose this is the skull, again very simple diagram. This is foramen magnum, right? So naturally these vertebral arteries through the foramen magnum will enter into cranial cavity. Now I told you where the major vessels should be in which space? Subarachnoid space. So it means they must pierce dura mater. They must go through dura mater, right? Then major artery should pierce arachnoid mater and then appear into subarachnoid space. There the major vessels are there and from there the final small branches are going on into brain substance. Am I clear to everyone? Okay. Uh, let's go into detail of vertebrobasilar system, right? First we'll study posterior system and then we will talk about interior system. Why it is so important to know, know the blood supply to different parts of the brain? Because one of the very common cause of neurological admissions in USA hospital is neurological dysfunctions produced due to vascular problems. The commonest cause, commonest causes of neurological dysfunction are vascular events, right? And you must know which part of the brain is supplied by which artery and which artery will be disturbed and what type of clinical problems and neurological dysfunction will appear in patient's system. Let's come back. We are going to talk about vertebral system and let's draw a simple diagram. You know brain stem? How many of you know brain stem very well? Brain stem comprises of? Yeah, what is that? Midbrain, Mid right? You can recognize it, good. And then what is that? Pons. Yeah? Pond, I think this is between asymmetric in my case. And then what is under it? And here it is? Spinal cord, right? What is this? Pontomedullary? junction and of course pyramids here and olives here here is pons midbrain right okay this is the interior aspect brain stem is looking to you right so that you really understand it is looking to you it's interior aspect of the brain stem and we have to explain the arterial system in reference to this Okay, before we really go, what is the structure here? Cerebellum, and this is the, yeah, under surface of cerebellum. Is it clear? Now, already you know that vertebral arteries have been moving like this on the sides, right, through those. Foramina, no fun in explaining those, those we have discussed it already, right? And you know from where they are coming? From subclavian arteries. As they reach to the lateral side of the lower part of medulla, they start moving to the medial side, right? So what we say, vertebral arteries here, they have gone to the medial Yes. Now, and these vertebral arteries meet each other at the pontomedullary junction. Right and left, again what we see, 
Vertebral arteries are going up through the transverse foramina, not foramina in the transverse processes of the cervical. Then they move medially, they pass through foramen magnum, pairs the dura mater and arachnoid mater appear into <coughs> subarachnoid space. Then they move forward, upward, and medially over medulla, right? And both vertebral arteries meet each other at what point? What is this point? Pontomedullary junction. And there they move upward as one united trunk, which is called basilar artery, right? Which is called basilar artery, right? So, and then what really happens? At this point, this basilar artery divides into terminal branches, right? And these terminal branches, yes, what are they called? These are going posteriorly, you know, they are hooded, headed backward. So, they are going posteriorly and we call them posterior cerebral arteries, posterior cerebral arteries. Now, this is the basic structure of vertebrobasilar system, right? The vertebrobasilar system has its origin in subclavian arteries, ascending two major branches as right and left vertebral arteries. They meet together at pontomedullary junction and then this united trunk becomes basilar artery, right? And basilar artery just above the, what are these? Don't tell me eyes. There are no eyes there. This is third cranial nerve region. You know, oculomotor nerve, that comes out from this point outward. You just see these, these are third nerve. So just above the third nerve exit from the brain stem, from the midbrain, right, their basilar artery divide into its terminal branches, two terminal branches, which are right and left posterior cerebral artery. Okay, posterior cerebral artery supply which part of the brain? Posterior part of the cerebral hemisphere, but please mention at least midbrain. They are moving around near the midbrain, isn't it? Then of course they go to the back of the cerebral hemisphere, we will talk about that later. Now this is the basic structure, right? Now we bring the branches, important branches. Number one, yes. From here, branches come from vertebral artery, from lower part of vertebral artery in front of medulla, branches come right and left, they unite together and then they descend in the anterior median fissure of spinal cord. What is this branch coming down? Anterior spinal artery, anterior spinal artery. Right? So, where the interior spinal artery originate? It originate in front of the medulla from the contributory branches of vertebral arteries which move medially and in front of the lower part of medulla they make interior spinal, spinal artery which descends downward, yes, descend downward in the anterior spinal Yes, interior, or media, interior spinal fissure. Is that right? Now, uh, this is this first branch. After that, other important branch is, yes, from here, another branch. Yes, who will tell me the name of this branch? Posterior, inferior, Cerebral artery, you know so much, that's good, but don't forget it supplies the medulla also, because this is important point, if people forget this supplies the lateral part of medulla also, and this is called posterior inferior, yes, cerebral artery, pica, what is the meaning of pica? Pica means 